Hello gamers, my name is Duma and welcome to the game room. Today we have a quick guide over the update to the one bar infinite archive DK build from last year that has now hit arc 10 solo as of last week. I also streamed the arc 9 to 10 push and I have that VOD available for you in the video description if you want to see the build in action. This is a quick one today, lots of overlap from the last version, but the written guide is up and available for you over at thegameroom.tv. Let's go. You can really make this work for any race, but Nord is going to be ideal. We have all 64 points in health using the Lover Mundus and Bear haunch food with tripods for your potions. We're going to be using Heartland's Conquer for that thick 470% charged weapon trait for status effect application. And then this is a dot and kite build. So we'll be using the Serpent's Disdain set, which extends our dot status effects by an additional 16 seconds, which is huge for us in upper arcs with all the gymnastics we'll be doing around the stage, leaving enemies melting while we're kiting to survive. We top that off with a monster helm with a line of penetration, oaken soul, and an ice staff. These are the traits for a Nord. Nords have the passive rugged which gives them 2,600 extra resistances. So non-Nords need to make this back in your gear traits. All of this is crafted gear, so it's not hard to determine exactly what you need in the crafted preview screen, but your options to do this are some combination of reinforced on heavy pieces, nern honed on the minor pieces, and protective on the jewelry. Here is a little chart to help you out. Pause and screenshot if needed. All armor pieces in heavy weight with try and chance, triple healthy traits on jewelry with increased magical harm and chance, and then a charged eye staff with the poison enchant. For early arc, to speed things up, you can drop the Heartland set for any DPS set you like. I've ran Pillar of Nern, Order's Wrath. It really doesn't matter much. Just some sort of solid DPS set to burn through the early arc adds faster. And then either a Lightning Staff if you prefer to Force Pulse spam stuff down, or an Inferno Staff if you still prefer to dot and kite the early stuff. I've used both. The faster option is Lightning with Force Pulse spam, but it's really not a big deal either way. You can also use a Light Helm here and then a second set of Jewelry in Infused if you like. CP is here for you as well. Nothing new from my usual stuff. You can change this as well for early arcs for more DPS if you like. For abilities, this is the final high arc version that you will see in the arc 9 and 10 gameplay VOD, but this is extremely overkill for early arcs and even the early mid tier arcs, but I'll show you some modifications for that area as well. Our first two abilities are the same little duo from other IA builds on the channel this season of Warding Soul and Healing Contingency. I've went over this several times now, but what I'll do is roll a clip from another video explaining this. And if you've already seen it, I'll put a timer at the bottom of the screen so you'll know exactly where to skip. First, we have two huge scribing skills. The first is Warding Soul, set up in this way with Shield, Heal, and Major Vitality. You really want to get these scripts if you don't have them. They are so impactful. This gives you an on-use shield, a heal over time, and then once activated, you get Major Vitality, increasing your shield strength and healing received by 12%. So once you pop this, boom, the shield tooltip is now bigger, giving you an even bigger shield and juicing your healing. With one extended favor vision, this buff extends out to 16 seconds. Any more than one of these visions is overkill. You will for sure be using this more than once every 16 seconds. But having one extension is nice in those one to two sweaty second windows where you get CC'd or something at the end of the 10 second timer. We're using a frost staff due to the tri-focus passive, giving you a meaty shield on every heavy attack. In mid to upper arcs, you'll be weaving in intermittent heavies, one for sustain, two for ferocious support procs if you have that vision, and for constant shielding. Weaving in these heavies in between abilities is enough to literally face tank marauders at certain points. A little trick here for you that you can use in many panic areas is to simply hold down your attack button, do not let go, and right as you fling each snowball, tap your shield. This will give you a double shield every two globals, recover your mag use from your ability shield, and float you through most of the tough mechanics in the archive. Here it is on the Thoat Dragon. This little tactic completely shut down any stress it may have caused. Next is healing contingency set up in this way. I've been talking about about this constantly for some months now. It's in my opinion that this is one of, if not the best defensive abilities in the game when used in the way that I use it. I know many will disagree, but again, we all play differently. This ability has elevated both mini PVP builds on the channel and definitely the archive builds. Some of you have probably heard the explanation a dozen times now, so I won't put you through it again here, but if you haven't, I made a short video I'll link here for you and I'll put in the description for you as well. Plus you can see it in the gameplay VOD in the description. Even if you are experienced in ESO, if this ability is new for you, I cannot recommend enough that you check out that video, mainly the dodge roll section. This ability introduced some new ways to do some things and the tooltip is not super evident on how to do them. Next we have Flare. This is only slotted for major protection for another 10% damage reduction. It's not actually used at all. Next is Hardened Armor. This is a fantastic shield that is super cheap and also gives us access to the passive Burning Heart, giving us another 12% increased healing and then a tiny bit more health recovery from Elder Dragon. So you just saw the 
high staff shield plus warding soul combo. Now we can add this to the mix for those really intense situations. Channeling heavies and weaving warden soul and hardened armor, effectively shielding us for 52k, giving us an effective health pool of right at 95k before any increases to health and shielding from the archive. There is a bit of a dance between the three you'll have to get used to, and hopefully the gameplay VOD can give you some perspective to help you out there, seeing it all in action. Next, we have our main damage generator, and this is where the magic happens. Elemental susceptibility, I call Elisus for short. This applies burning on the initial application, which is extended to about 20 seconds with Serpent Sustain. As you are light weaving this around, which side note, you should be light weaving everything, even your shields, light weave everything, because this is proccing your poison enchant from your staff, which is also applying the poison status effect, also being extended out by 16 seconds from Serpent Sustain. Now let's look at the DK Combustion passive, which says burning and poison status effects have their damage increased by 40%. So if you think about adding 40 more percent to burning and then add 40 more percent to poison, it's almost like having a free third mini status effect damage wise. Then at this point in the archive, you definitely want to have gotten the ferocious support vision, which gives you the bleed on heavy attacks, which is also proccing the hemorrhage status effect that is also being extended by Serpent Sustain. So when you put all of this together with one button and upper arcs and some focused effort stacks, we are consistently pushing out 200 to 300k DPS on trash stages from these lingering status effect dots. And there are lots of examples of that for you to see in the gameplay VOD if interested. Pretty cool stuff. I've said it a million times, passes are the engine behind builds. Read them, learn them. You'll be surprised what kind of squirreliness you can pull off when taking advantage of them like we're doing here. Last, our ultimate magma shell, probably the best ultimate in the game for infinite archive, reducing damage sources to 3% of your max health, more or less making you immortal for its duration. The big thing though is you can build ultimate while it's active. So while it's up, you're already building the new one. For early arcs, there are a few solid things you can do to speed that up. Bring in Force Pulse in place of Flare, and then Flames of Oblivion in place of Warding Soul. You can also drop Hardened Armor for something like Eruption. Things are going to die super fast. Just drop Eruption in the middle of spawns, Ellie suss a few things, and Force Pulse them down. Nothing should last more than a few globals typically, especially if you made the early arc gear changes listed before. At the beginning of arc 2 and 3, until the Marauder is dead, bring back your Ice Staff and Warding Soul, and if you feel you need a little bit more help, you can also bring back Hardened Armor as well. After they're dead, you can fall back to the early arc setup. At the start of arc four, you should be in the full in-game setup, ideally with a focused efforts or two. If you don't have any focused efforts by arc four, I would just reset. The early arc setup is too squishy and the late arc setup is too much of a slog without a focused efforts at this point to juice your status effects. I wanna add one more thing real quick. An option you can use for mid-tier arcs is Bloody Torch set up like this with bleed and bleed over time. This will add solid hemorrhage for you a little quicker to help chop through all of that. A little trick here is you don't have to channel the full channel. You can use it for one tick, then block cancel it, and you still get the bleed dot on the targets without having to be locked in to two full globals. And boom, that's it gamers, nice and quick. Don't forget the written guide is up and available for you on the website, and there is some gameplay in the video description. If you try it out, I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll try to help you out. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.